So mm-hmm. let's talk about the uncommitted. Minnesota uh, was the biggest showing. Um, right. We just had somebody uh, 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 I am us in Wadena, Minnesota. Two hundred and sixteen people votes for Biden, and forty seven voted for uncommitted, which was, mm-hmm. I guess, the uh, worst place that Biden performed. Uh, twenty twelve, there was no uh, Minnesota primary. I tr- I tried to look this up to try and get an assessment of what the uh, uncommitted votes were at that time. What what is I mean, uh, you, you know, you mentioned this is like sort of turnkey and people. Uh, yeah. it, it's a great. I, that's why I think it's such a great sort of protest. And if uh, what's your sense of like how yeah. upsetting it is to the Biden campaign? In other words, like how much. It's very hard for them to say this is meaningless to themselves if they've said mm-hmm. in the run up, like, we got to stop this. Uh, yes. And it's a great protest for them. Just if I could be as neutral as possible. What are the options uh, for for Biden and people who want him to change course on Israel? Uh, one would be not not voting for him at all. One would be voting for Cornell West. Uh, one would be voting for Trump to accelerate the conditions and 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 put him back in office. One one is organizing right now in these primaries, and there's a lot of when I talk to and you talk to this to these, these folks too. You talk to more of them. Uh, you talk to uncommitted organizers; they're very joyful. They're 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 horrified what's happening. This has given them purpose. They they are building community when they felt lost for five months, and they say and they saw people with their with their views about Israel getting you know hounded out of conversations, out of jobs. Uh, it, it it is keeping the. I think the the the, the slate pitch that I still have in me, Prime Minister is slate is it's actually keeping the Democratic coalition together in a strange way that I don't think it would it it would be. In if if these if these voters were all saying screw it, I'm going to vote for Jill Stein. I mean Jill Stein. I talked to Jill Stein a couple weeks ago. She is campaigning for those voters, saying yes, this is another reason to bail on Biden, and they're choosing not to do so. They're choosing to build some power ahead of the convention in Chicago, uh, and just tell the story. It's a big part of this is uh, the public facing media part of it of just saying, hey, instead of a story uh, that says, oh, and by the way. Joe Biden got 85% of the vote in this primary, la di da The story of these primaries on the ground has been meet the people who are organizing for a ceasefire, meet the, meet, listen to the reasons why they're doing it, and maybe include a poll uh, which says most Democratic voters, super majority of them, want him to change course on this. So yeah, they're getting, they're getting uh, this sounds almost Pollyanna-ish, because it's not good for Biden that everywhere he goes, he gets protested, but he's getting protested by people who would like to be able to vote for him and morally don't think they can, right? Well, yeah, I mean, right. This, I'm not saying anything new to you guys, but that is, that's how I see this in the primary. It is not a, it, it is a problem for Biden right now that is preventing a much worse, you know, existential fatal problem for Biden in November. It shows that they're engaged is basically, I mean, mm-hmm. what you're yeah, saying, yeah. this is an engagement as opposed to a, a resignation. Um, and I, I saw that the state party in Minnesota says that there are going to be 11 uncommitted delegates uh, going to the convention. And that means two from Michigan as well. So that paired with the inevitable protests at the Democratic convention in Chicago sets up a situation where, like, as much as the Biden administration wants to to put out press releases and, and ignore the uncommitted vote, it's going to be a situation at the convention. Yeah, and they're responding to them. You guys are talking about how they responded. They responded basically in saying, uh, that, yeah, well, we, we saw the vice president's speech in Selma this week. You've seen the way that Biden talks about it. Um, the way they see this politically is that ceasefire is popular. Cutting off all aid uh, to Israel, all military aid right now would, is not is not popular, but it is with Democrats. And if Biden negotiated some sort of ceasefire that stopped uh, what Israel's doing, prevent you know, stop people from getting shot to death when they're going for food supplies, etc., for six weeks. That would not satisfy a lot of people organizing for uncommitted. It would satisfy a lot of Democrats. So they would still get protested. Look, they're going to get protested over this policy through the administration. And they were getting protested on climate before that. They're going to get protested. I think this is a difference mentally between me and a lot of people who cover politics. Is I I, I, I see, you know, direct action is part of the political menu. It's 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 not it by Joe Donald Trump doesn't get protested that much because people are hauled hauled out of the arena and he's got a smaller coalition than Biden. Biden has a messier coalition including some people who want to show up and pressure him and sometimes it works when I, mean, I covered a version of this with don't ask don't tell in the obama years people would show up and they'd heckle and they'd make that the story but they listened so that is what's happening with biden 
his response to it, uh, the way that I've seen, you know, Walid, uh, Walid Shahid and other uh, organizers I've talked to, they are taking credit for when, if there is a change in policy. So I guess the Biden administration have to put up with that. If it looks, and this is, if, if I'm Marco Rubio or, or whatever, if I'm a Republican who wants to attack Biden, if there is a change in policy, if there is a, a, a temporary, even a temporary ceasefire and BB doesn't like it, uh, I would I would say as Marco Rubio, Biden has listened to these far left radicals who hate Israel or something something of that nature. Um, they don't really care about that. I mean, like their goal here is is ending the war as soon as possible because people are dying. Right. Sixty percent of Americans disapprove of Biden's handling of yeah. this. I mean, and how long did it take? I know it's different because there's the nationalism element and the 9-11 part of it. But how long did it take for the public to begin to turn on the war on terror? It took a much longer. Um, much, there much was a, longer. Yeah. a much, much longer. Years. And so this is a seismic shift in now. OK, so tomorrow will be March 7th in five months. Is that six months? Five months? Mm-hmm. I can't do math. But uh, that's a very, very significant kind of shift for Biden. And that doesn't just... Uh, confine itself to the Democratic far left activists or to Arab American voters in Minnesota yeah. or Michigan. All right. Yeah. I mean, for every uncommitted voter, there are several Biden voters who are sticking with him, but wish he'd change the policy. 